Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. We've got Ideas by Elliot. Hey, folks, you're listening to Ideas by Elliot. And we're here with Ideas by Elliot. Podcast, podcast, <laughs> podcast. <laughs> This is the Ideas by Elliot podcast, sponsored by Camera Corner Studios, and my new sponsor for October, Release Wire. I'm Elliot Christensen, and normally I spend my time working with clients on internet projects, websites, marketing, email, all the stuff they need to get their business found online. This is my chance to take a break, talk in depth with the most interesting people that I know. There are no rules, there's no censor, there are no do-overs, it's raw, unscripted, and never edited. This is episode number 11, our first Ask Me Anything. In this episode, I'm joined by one of our area's mega geeks, Dave Limberger, and as always, I'm with Nick from Camera Corner Studios. We talk about the recent Apple upgrades, some recent Google products, and the ad apocalypse. Ad blocking is now super easy on iOS. This time we have Geeko background music created by Nick and a live clip from my favorite Green Bay band, Band of Seahorses, coming up next. Is that it? That's the song. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so that's that's a, an original production by our very own Nick Watier. I don't. I don't. Does it have a name? Uh, it's called Chill and Stay. Chill and Stay. It's actually available for free on SoundCloud oh, uh, as of free. March 2014. Nice. So, chill. Uh, you know, whenever anybody says chill, that's like the chill and Netflix and chill now to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Little ambient backing music. Yeah. So today, uh, I do have sort of a guest here, uh, my friend Dave. Give me a little brief intro, Dave. Um, my name's Dave. Just good friends with Elliot. Give me like Talk. your full name. My like, full name. Why you? Why the hell you have a Raiders sweatshirt so on? So formal, right? Oh, <laughs> dude. Two and one this year. That's probably better than they've done the last ten years in a row. What's your last name, Dave? Uh, Limberger. All David right. Limberger. Yeah. So, and why are we friends? We're friends because we love technology and we we, we uh, complement each other's conversations a lot. Yeah. So I invited you along because I thought uh, we could tackle some of these uh, like techie questions. There were a few of those. Um, we're gonna try to mix it up though because that gets kind of I don't know, kind of boring, kind of in the weeds, and uh, you know whatever. But uh, so I, I put a little call out on the Facebook today. Looking for some questions. And I know the first one, it was phrased kind of weird, uh, was from Rhonda. And it was a great question, so I want to get it right. So I'm going to pull it up real quick here. And uh, she asked, oh, there's too much stuff on Facebook. i got to scroll forever. Until I find that. Um, okay, here we go. So... She had asked if there is, this is her question, is there anything in your life that you've done that you completely regret that you would do over again? That's a super crazy hard question, you know, because obviously people uh, do things they regret that they uh, uh, would want to do differently, right? Uh, and I have plenty of those. I have probably a million of those, but uh, things that I regret that I would do again. I guess that means that that's something that you learned a lesson from, right? Lessons are good. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, you know, so I guess there's some painful things that I went through that I regretted, like uh, 
uh, you know, go through the whole um, Broadway thing and, um, you know, so taking on, take, you know, putting yourself out there and put it, you know, uh, having some leadership running for school board, that was expensive and, and, you know, and I didn't win. So, uh, I think I would probably do those things over again. Uh, you know, if, if everything was the same and even if they're different, cause I, I learned a lot. So I think I would do better at all that stuff now. I don't know. You have anything like that? You're Ooh, here. So you're in the, right. you're in the gunner seat now. And there's no dodging, no dodging questions. I would say there's probably a lot of things you can look back on your life and you could say you'd do them again, but then you really wouldn't be you if you did do them again, because you are who you are because of what you did. Yeah. You know, so it's, so of it's sort of that thing, right? Right. It's that circular logic. Like you, uh, you can't. You can't kind of unravel who you are because it's right. a collection of your past, right? Right. So I don't There's know. Definitely a few things, you know, I would I would definitely do again no matter what. If I had that chance, like, you know, going in the military, yeah. I think that was one thing in my life that definitely had a hard press of shaping who I am, you know, and that's probably one of the major cornerstones but of my life. But you regretted so. it at the time? At the time, you know, because yeah. you're there and you're like, man, this yeah. sucks. You know, this is, right. this is rough. This is tough. But yeah. then afterwards, and maybe not immediately when you get done, but, you know, later on when you get done, you look back yeah. and you're like, Wow, that was really good. And you look at people today, like a lot of the younger kids today, and and you know you see a lot of them you know, lacking a little bit of discipline or something like that. You think so that's true. That? I mean, so you know, put into that context, I guess there's not a lot of things I would do differently. You know, because you could say like whatever, everything, right? Like friends, girlfriends, like oh, there's all sorts of things I do differently, right? But those things kind of do shape you. Uh, I always think like, uh, hey, I would love to go back in the past and not provide dial-up internet access, you know, because that was just a money pit. And uh, to me is why I'm still broke. <laughs> so, you know, that that that's one of those things like uh, hindsight makes things better. But that's, you know, you have to learn. So, you know, uh, so that's a, that's a good tough question. So I hopefully I, I did that justice. Um, and if anybody's listening live... Uh, what is that phone number again? It was four. I just had called it. I should, I should have had that handy. So you can, uh, hit me up on the Facebook or you can, uh, message me or tweet or anything like that. If you know how to get a hold of me, that, uh, you know, that big whiteboard that I said, is it right there? Yeah. <laughs> Look, you know what? It even says, call you know in. what? You're being cocky, but you don't have the clock up. I, that's what I'm <laughs> working on right now. I so the, the number, power. the number, if anybody wants to call in, is 920-438-0394. This is an experiment. It's short notice. I totally won't be surprised if we get zero calls. If we do, I'll kind of be shocked and not really know what to do. And uh, hopefully the questions are, are uh, entertaining and uh, super difficult. So, so Don, if you're <laughs> listening, you should call in because that would be hilarious. Uh, so I have another question. Uh and this is kind of a techie question, so this is from Don Nelson. And he said, why is Drupal not as good as WordPress? And so, ha, 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 that's so hilarious for all the web nerds that know me, right? Because, you know, they think I'm the Drupal guy, right? And um, while that's true, um, I do feel that there are some places where WordPress is simpler. So, um, well, simpler is a hard thing too, right? Like That means many different things, right? Um, like it's easier for me to do things in Drupal than it is in WordPress. So my ideas by Elliot website, ideas by Elliot.com, that's Drupal, but to provide a, this is super geeky, but to provide a podcast feed, I think it's easier in WordPress. Uh, that was actually a little bit more difficult than I wanted it to be in Drupal. And I totally so, agree. <clears throat> yeah. I totally agree because WordPress has ridiculous amounts of plugins. So, Okay, so that that's the 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 downside of the WordPress plugin thing, though, is like a plugin is sort of self-contained, by and large. Mm -hmm. So it's just a different philosophy. So Drupal, it's like you have these components and you kind of put them all together. And you build your you know big website collectively with all these different pieces. And WordPress, it's kind of like here's a little piece that does this thing. Here's a little piece that does that thing. And uh, but. You know, to go full circle on that, if you're doing a if you're doing a podcast, it's not like there's a whole bunch of options right. on it. You're putting out a podcast feed, so because I did that my show, yeah. and then I had a friend that wanted to do a show, I set up WordPress for him, and yeah. since I had learned everything on WordPress yeah. already, it took me all of seven minutes wow. to launch his WordPress. Now, podcast. to be fair, I could do it in seven minutes in Drupal now too. True. So you know, it's it's just what you know, yeah. um, and so there's there's a few things to it. I do feel like creating components in Drupal is easier. I really do. 
uh, because of you know the nature of how things work. There's some good rules on keeping things kind of compartmentalized. Um, and but that said, there's a ton more people that are familiar with WordPress. So if you're looking to do something relatively easy, there's millions of people that know how to do WordPress stuff. I feel like uh, you know. I, the the question's even more complex than that because now there are some web based alternatives. There's like uh, you know if you listen to podcasts, Squarespace is all over the place. Um, so it becomes a little difficult to know which things would be. Uh, and chime in here, Dave, if you have another opinion. But uh, um, I have a hard time thinking of things that I couldn't just do in Squarespace that would be vastly easier in WordPress versus the flexibility that Drupal gives me. So I don't know. If you have anything else to add to that, go ahead. I think that the WordPress is simpler for simple items. You know, like if you're trying to do a blog or yeah. a photo page, that kind of a thing, doing a lot of that stuff is a lot easier in WordPress because it's already kind of pre-built it's for that function. Yeah. But like Drupal gives you more the flexibility of stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think like in uh, WordPress, you're always fishing for the right plugin. Like if you try to do a plugin for podcasts, so to say, yeah. there's like 50 of them. That's, like which one's yeah. the best one to yeah. use? And then you got to try one, like, oh, that one sucks. And you throw that one out the window right. and you try another one. I think in Drupal, you... Um, they become kind of left, accepted right? norms. So right. like, uh, so as I was developing my site, I've been working on uh, an audio player module for Drupal, and it's still not approved to be like hosted as an official Drupal.org project. So there's some extra vetting that kind of goes on, and everyone that uses Drupal stuff, they go to Drupal.org. They don't like just go fishing around for you know random Googling. So... There is some extra security testing and some sort of vetting to make sure that, like, this doesn't do exactly the same thing as 10 other things. <laughs> right, and I think that helps a lot. So It does help but a somebody lot, just but it's super hard off. as somebody right. who wants to contribute, too. So, like, all these things are really just philosophical differences that, uh, you know, make make them just, it's a, it's a preference more than anything. Well, and you have the super guru knowledge of the inner workings of all the HTML and stuff like that. Yeah. Somebody else, they just want something simple. Well, that's that's the other thing. I mean, it all boils down to really your experience with being able to produce things that kind of break the mold. So you run up against something that's brand new. Like, I never did a podcast before. So once you come up against something new, I still felt confident I could do it. Right. Because I could, you know, produce all of it. But, like, how easy is it? Uh, you know, there's pros and cons. And, and the pros are the cons in both, right? Like, it's just they're totally different philosophies. Um that said, I don't know why the hell anybody would use anything else because the pros and cons that make both of those awesome work against everything else, right? So, because the e ecosystems just aren't that big. It's these are these just take two different approaches, but anything else the ecosystems are smaller. So, like I don't know why anybody would else would use any other system unless they're using like a web-based Squarespace thing or something. I have no experience with Squarespace, so I can't speak on that one. Yeah. I mean, it's super limited. Right. But and, and and then I go back to well, if somebody wants something super limited, well, I don't know why they're not just using Facebook or Apple or what or Apple. Uh, wow. See, wow. we'll we'll diverge <laughs> there because I defy you to find anything I can't do with this with this little magic box, my Mac. All right, so uh, so that was a nerdy question. I wish I wish somebody would have given us some other uh, you know softballs. Well, I think. I think we need to ask you the question that every guest on Ideas by Elliot gets. Oh, yeah, you kind of did that. What, why are you here? Yeah, why am I here? Um, you know what? I needed a uh, change of pace. And I kind of always in the back of my head, and I think part of it was, uh, you know, Don kind of plant, Don planted a seed, I guess, you know, that I kind of even sort of forgot about. And uh, I had a lot of negativity around me for a little while. And I got tired of talking to the negativity, and I wanted to talk to people that um, inspire me. So I don't know if that's a good answer. I don't know. Do um, you think there's a lot of people that inspire you in this town? I know we've seen a few of you them. You know, they don't have to all be in this town. You know, I, 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 the, the rules are sort of, you know, malleable. Now that I know that we can do phone calls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's been tested. Next, right. next week, be a phone-in host. Uh, but guess. but uh, but honestly, you kind of lose something if somebody's over the phone. You know, like there's a little bit of you know intangible, like looking Dave in the eye and saying, you know, you're a scumbag that like Samsung too much, right? right. Like if I say that over the phone, I it doesn't feel as fulfilling to me, right? So um, 
are there that many people that inspire me? Yeah, there are. There's uh, and more than I thought. So uh, I had somebody that was recommended to me that I didn't know, and he's like a bionic dancer, and uh, that's inspiring, right? Am I wrong? I guess like, that's that's a good way to summarize the show three it, weeks from now, right? And I and I was like blown away by that. So um, and. And I guess I'm more blown away by surprises like that than, you know, that's, I don't know, that's sort of the definition of being blown away, I guess. But um, I, uh, yeah, I'm inspired by a lot of people. Like, I, Scott Eastman, you know, wow, you know, I, I, I'm, I am blown away by certain people. And then, you know, and then he's on here, and then afterwards he's blown me away more. You know, he's off, like, saving the world. Um, so... There's some, uh, I, you know, look at my friends list on Facebook. There's a ton of people that inspire me. Every once in a while, you inspire me, Dave. <laughs> Not often. That's why you, you don't get your own show. Right. Right. I don't have to put them in the title, do I? You didn't say you were going to. Yeah, I'm not going to. That was not part of the concept. <laughs> oh. oh, forever going on history is that guy. Is that, is that an adequate response? You're right here, Nick. So you can you can like challenge me. If, if oh, my I think that's a good response. Yeah, I think that's a good response. It's better than forcing me to finish it up with a joke because I was gonna if if you dodge the question, I was gonna say, oh. let me rephrase. Why are you still here? Oh, nice. But, <clears throat> I don't dodge questions. For yeah. good or bad, I don't dodge questions. Uh, let's see what else we got. Oh, so Randy Scannell asks, what is your first memory? That's, uh, that's weird and crazy. So, uh, totally random because I don't, I don't know if this matters to anybody, but, uh, uh, like I have a little scar on my lip. The very first thing that I remember was, uh, I had like a little big wheel or something. I think, uh, it was, I think it was technically a little ice cream truck and, uh, um, I was not aware that I couldn't just fly off of a flight of stairs. And I think, I don't know, I was two or three. I don't know. I was uh, young enough to be stupid, but old enough to, that I probably should have known better. right? But I, uh, I thought, oh, well, I'm, I, whatever, I can fly. This is all good. And, uh, and the next, like, I, I don't really remember that happening. Maybe like the, whatever, the shock thing. But I remember sitting on the, the hood of my dad's car. Uh, and him like uh, trying to find what hospital to bring me to to, to get stitches. <laughs> Seems like all the traumatizing events are the ones you remember the best. I think probably going back for me would be uh, I was like five or six years old. We lived overseas at the time and sitting on the backyard and I was, I don't know, I, was, I liked rocks or something like that at the time. Um, so I'm sitting there looking at rocks and my brother, who was like half my age at the time, comes over with probably the biggest rock he could carry. And I don't know if he slipped or intentionally dropped it, but it landed square on the top of my head. Which resulted in lots of stitches at the hospital. And a concussion? No concussion. Although oh. maybe maybe there was. I don't remember that part. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some kind of joke here because you know you're you know you're you buy Samsung stuff. I do buy Samsung. So you know I gotta I gotta have some kind of jab in there. Uh, those are uh, those are really great questions. I wish I had more like that. Um, so let's talk about the Apple stuff then. What's your favorite thing out of the latest uh, oh. Apple announcements? Yeah, so um, my favorite thing, uh, probably the Apple TV. Yeah, I think. Um, and, like, the, the iPad Pro is cool, but I just bought this expensive iPad, so I'm not going to go buy another one right away. And, uh, and the Pro's huge. And it's huge. Yeah, it's I mean, it's, 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 like it's, yeah, it's like the size of the MacBook screen. Yeah. And uh, so I don't know that that's too big or whatever. I, I don't I don't. Like right now, there's no there's no software for it, so I, I don't know why anybody should rush out and get it. Um, and they call it Pro, but I actually think it will be not very many uh, like high end business customers. And you know, Nick maybe would talk to this more than than I would with Camera Corner, but like uh, the I, I think that I think businesses want you know they buy Samsung or they buy they buy a fleet of like the 16 gig Apple phones because they you know they just buy the the cheap ones and they get a thousand of them. And when you have this like high end expensive tablet versus buying a thousand iPad minis, for instance, I think uh, that's that's rough. So I think it's going to be more like, you know, people like us fanatics that'll like rush out and get it because it's cool. But I, I don't know how that is going to sell that well. I don't I, really know. I don't think it will sell that well either. I think that the next iteration in typical Apple fashion. Yeah. You know, like the pro. the 
iPad Pro S or whatever you want to call it, yeah. the next iteration, yeah. I think it's going to be more like, I think they're trying to replace the Air, the MacBook Air. So I think that's going to be where it's going to come in and, and it's going to get a better processor in the future, I think. I think that's going to be their next step. Yeah, that. well, I mean, they already talked the to that, I think. Aside. I think, like, the, the, the speed test, it's already faster because it's ARM versus Intel, right? Right. It's already faster than, like, the equivalently priced Air, I think, or it's, like, right mm-hmm. in the same ballpark. Um, but, you know, it depends on what you need to do. Um, and there is no, like, pro... I mean, there's not none, right? But there's not a lot of, like, pro iPad software versus what, you know, what you get on a Mac. You know, I think about, like, the audio, video, editing stuff. Like, there's Photoshop apps on the iPad, but, like, not full Photoshop. And I don't and know they're if, cumbersome. I don't know they if they're, they're going to do that. Yeah. Well, and that's really yeah. what's going to be the question for the iPad Pro, because so many yeah. of the functions that make the iPad Pro worth getting over a typical iPad are going to require special software. Like the stylus and the pressure and sensitivity. Because the, the stylus is another 100 bucks. That's true. Keyboard's yeah. 150 <laughs> So as far as... You're really looking at a $1,000... Yeah. It's, well, it's, I, I think it's 1000 to start with anyway. Right. Yeah. 899 or something like that? But I would yeah. say like as far as uh, attach and getting people onto the iPad yeah. Pro, I think you're right on. You know, uh, A business that needs 100 devices for 100 employees, or let's be realistic here, 1,000 devices for 1,000 employees, they're going to go out and they're going to buy iPod Touches, iPad Airs, iPad Minis. Right. They're going to go for those lower cost options that are expendable. Mm-hmm. It's going to be your C level or your SMB, you know, uh, your entrepreneurs or your creatives. They're going to buy the iPad Pro because there's an app that works for them. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that you see that make people love iPad so much is the specialization within the apps. You know, like the sound mixer I run the show on. There's an iPad app where I could be wirelessly True. running the mixer. Yeah. The video switch we use on site. There's an iPad app that I could be using the mixer. There's, I'm sure there's web programming toolkits that somehow, there's I don't a, know how. There's but a lot. They've yeah. got to make it easy to code on iPad. So when iPad Still first, need a keyboard. You need a keyboard. <laughs> yeah. That's the, and right. when, when iPad first came out, yeah. I was really kind of against the all touch screen everything. Yeah. And just give me a computer. I want to get work done. Yeah. But what's happening is... They're making faster, more convenient, easier ways to do things with a specific yeah. app. Yeah. Right. So the iPad itself is nice, but it's nothing until you add an app to it. Well, and I, I still, uh, you know, I struggle with that because I have like all these Adobe apps and uh, on the iPad, and um, they're okay, but um, you have to flip between these different apps to mm-hmm. get anything done and uh and and you you can't you also can't really leverage your knowledge of illustrator and photoshop into these other drawings cuz they're totally different they're tools yeah. totally different so i'm like ah i mean maybe this is the way things are going but like even to like draw a straight line you have to like you know use two fingers to move this like thing this ruler thing it's just really not intuitive it it it's fine, and to, but to make it intuitive, they have to strip it down so much, and they have to separate it into separate apps. Which is maybe it's okay. I mean, may, and maybe that's the way uh, younger, more modern people think. And maybe I'm old and just you know think about the, the easy way to get work done, and I'm unwilling to learn something new. I, I don't know. That's well, that's rough. What's gonna sell the iPad Pro is if it someday runs OS X or a bridge version. That yeah. you can run some OS X so, apps. So, so, so Donzai asked me that, my friend Donzai, the other Don. Uh, he uh, he actually said, um, "Do I envision a day where OS X and iOS, uh, you know, come together?" And uh, I think that's actually kind of far away, relatively speaking. Farther uh, than driverless cars. It's in the same vicinity. Yeah, because, um, you know, until they can get, I just can't, uh, I can't envision them getting an iPad slim enough that uh, throwing a keyboard on there is still going to be convenient enough, Um, you know, especially for the small ones, for, uh, you know, for people to put in their pockets or purses. I, you know, there's something to be said for it just being ultra, ultra small and, and uh, the phones are never going to run OS X. Yeah. Um, And... The computers, uh, I don't know if you need, like, windows that move around. That's actually kind of, uh, I think we've all agreed that, like, that was not really, that was cool. 
yeah but, but it's not really useful for getting things done like i hate to say it like uh the like windows 7 8 10 way of window management is better than the mac up until the one that comes out today el capitan they finally allow you to snap the windows to the edge finally like, like built in there's and there's and there's add-ons you can get so like the, it's a different philosophy again right like so you can say like you know oh the iphone would be great if it was thicker and had a bigger battery or had a removable battery but you know you can get a case that has a battery you can have a case that has a keyboard you can you know so there's add-ons that allow you to kind of change all this stuff and so that it, it, it just becomes this like huge gray area but computers are for getting work done to me right. and until uh but but then i look at like well what work do i actually get done that i couldn't get done on an ipad and there's not that much there really isn't and it's just more of a workflow like what i'm comfortable with but i'm like could i be comfortable doing it on the ipad and so i think os 10 will go away really yeah i could be because i the things that it brings aren't see and i kind of see the other way and oh, I, don't know. I i hate to oracle <laughs> i hate to oracle apple's future based on what microsoft is doing oh, see because they will go the opposite but, way well right. so here's here's the thing that's that's actually working for microsoft and gaining the market share is windows 10 yeah. right is the same on your tablet, same on your phone, same on your computer. It's not One gaining a market share. Learn. It's not gaining a market share. There's there's almost no Windows tablets. There's almost and there's there's definitely no Windows phones. Hey, they sold a crap ton of Windows tablets to the NFL. Sold. <laughs> but sold. that's not a tablet. That's okay. that's not a tablet. That's a PC. Well, like I, I didn't define, okay, define the difference between tablet and PC. Then. Well, it runs a. This it is, runs this a, is where it, the gray area is really going to be. Run, in the near it future. runs. A, it runs a desktop operating system. Yeah. So no, then, now you have to define what. And no. it comes with a keyboard with a trackpad. Oh, uh, the surface that's doesn't a come with it. Huh? Doesn't come with surface it. Surface doesn't come with that. No, nope, that's, that's an accessory. That's an accessory. Okay, okay, but so is the stylus. Okay. Okay. Unlike the iPad Pro. Nobody is going to buy that thing without a keyboard. I don't think anybody with that is going to get the iPad Pro without a keyboard. I just think if you have a tw- 13 inch screen, it's like 12.9 or something like that. So yeah. 13 inch screen, right? Yeah. I mean, you're in the you're in the. Do you have a Surface? You're in the last, I don't have a Surface. Do you have a Surface, Nick? I have one issued to me for work for demo purposes. You use it. I do not because <laughs> because that, I drop it off with customers. And they, but I have a desktop that does yeah, I don't twice know. as much. Like, as any, I mean, the Surface could never hold for the power of my desktop, so. Right, and that's the thing. I mean, you got to oh, find I, that right market. See, that's where I disagree. These things are getting so much more powerful so fast. Really? I could oh never my replace my computers with a tablet. Right. Oh, you're video so editing, wrong. audio editing. You know what? Doing graphics just, and Photoshop. So and, those are like niches of a niche. You can definitely do video editing on an iPad. Not so, After Effects. You, but you, right, you can't. So you can't run those niche things. But you can do the ninety percent. You can definitely do the ninety percent. You can do the ninety percent of. Photo editing. Everybody's doing ninety percent. Though I want to do the other ten yep. percent. Nobody's doing right. that. Nope. Fair enough. Right. And that, so, so that's where like th- it's going to be tough to move away from this. But, but that software you're mentioning, software products. I think those software products are going to move to iOS before. I don't see it happening because, yeah. like, we'll a good example out. would be that software product we'll that After Effects. We'll I think Windows out. is doing it right right now because you have a starting with the next iteration of phones coming out. Actually, the announcements next week. But Windows, the entire OS will be on their phones now. You can plug in a monitor to it, and you have your computer right there with you all the time. Not really. Universal login. No, not really. You have to recompile for the phone. So it's really not that much, like from a development standpoint, it's really not that much different than, than an iPhone versus a, you know, a desktop Mac. Like you can use Xcode to, to develop these apps. You can use Xcode to develop Apple TV apps. But you have to recompile it, and they have different UIs. Like, you don't want your phone UI to be exactly the same as your desktop UI, or it defeats the purpose. Well, that's the Windows philosophy, so, though. That's what they're trying right. to do. But, but we'll see. It ain't going to work. It hasn't worked so far. <laughs> I don't know. I think... I How think many for... phone apps do you run on your, on, your, uh, on your Windows laptop? None. None yet. Well... But like he's saying... You could I have, can, though. If I can buy a phone for... That'll even if I got to pay two grand for my phone, and it works as a PC when I plug it into a TV, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. That's really cool. Uh, maybe. I don't. I mean, you can plug your phone into a TV now, and right. What but are you, you don't do have that Windows OS. I don't, who, well, does Does anybody actually want that? I do. On yeah. on your TV though. Like sure. I'm being realistic. I'm well, not everybody. just being a Windows hater. I think there's. I think Windows 10 is pretty awesome for for a desktop OS. I think it's fine. I think it's great. I don't think it's a 
all that for a tablet, but I, I get that some people want these convertible things. I, th I think it's fine. I think it adds extra complexity for that most people don't want. Um, and it, I think most people would be far better served by a, you know, a MacBook Pro and an iPad. <laughs> I know I understand it's more expensive to do it that way, but I think they'd be far better served that way. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm always anyway. arguing with how, why do you need both? So I went, I have a tablet, a cell phone, and a desktop computer. Yeah, right. And I feel I think that's the three ways. I don't know if I would ever have a laptop and a tablet. So I will. I, feel I like will too much. I will tell you. Kind of I will tell you why I have three. This is my always with me communication device. My iPhone. Right. My iPad is my. Uh, I want to watch Netflix, listen to music by myself, or read device. It's it's not and not just for consumption, but for like casual production. So if I'm doing like a an easy video edit or an easy photo edit, uh, you know, where I want a room of a red eye or something, like I'll do that on the iPad or you know some easy con uh, text input. Right? Um, I might do that. I might do that on the phone though. I guess too. Um, but the computer's for work. And it's very rare that I use it for anything other than work, or, unless there's like some crazy app that I need. You know, like uh, uh, I don't see much need for this anymore. But like, uh, you know, there's no BitTorrent for iPad or for right. iPhone, right? Um, but like, I don't know how often anybody does that stuff anymore. The only you know? thing that I, the thing that I had problems with when I tried doing both was that I had, I'd be on the tablet doing something, like you said, like, you know, yeah. easy video editing. Yeah. But you're saying you're editing this, editing, 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 and you get to the spot, like, oh, I want to do, oh, wait, I can't do that here. So now I got to convert it or transport it or move it or, you know, put it on the internet and re-download yeah. it to the laptop, to the computer, to the, you but know, that, whatever other device. So you you know, though, that's a, that's a software problem. Gets, that's a software problem, though. What's a limitation, though? It's a, it, well, it, it's not like a necessarily a hardware limitation. I feel like that could be solved. And right. you run into the same limitation on a laptop where, oh, I don't have that software, so then i got to download it and i got to, right. you know, mess around with it. So, all right, enough said about that, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, so, I don't know if I have any other questions, but uh, so I was looking at, like, some uh, news things that, that came out. So uh, there's all this talk today about uh, Twitter upping the 140 character limit. What do you think about that? Too little, too late. Yeah, too little, too late. Really? Yeah. So, um, so that's super interesting because also yesterday uh, Snowden, it was announced, is on right. Twitter. So, right. so like there, there are things that are on Twitter that aren't anywhere else, and. But yet, you know, I do hear that, like, well, you know, Facebook won, so it's all, it's all over. Is that... I don't think Facebook won. I think Facebook and Twitter are two different things. I just think Twitter kind of lost its way somewhere. I yeah. think, you know, Twitter used to be more business-related, like business-to-business, people-to-business kind of thing, and people talking to people in a business fashion. Really? Where Facebook is more casual. Really? That's just the way I always saw it. Right, that, maybe that's just the ideas I had in my head of how it should be used. Yeah, I don't maybe. Know. Well, it's public. It's always public. Right. Well, I, I feel like Twitter was killed by the pro proliferation. Ugh, I can't speak. Yeah. Proliferation of smartphones. Right? I don't need it to fit in a text message anymore because I got a smartphone and it does. Yeah. So, but, so Twitter kind of uh, grew, though, with the smartphone. Yeah. So, like, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't popular at all until the iPhone hit. And that's when people really started using it. The thing to me, like, what made Twitter work so well initially when i jumped on board was yeah. the text messaging interface did you actually use that all the time why that was the only reason i used twitter because of the text wow. capabilities wow. it was phenomenal i used that for like three weeks and then i'm like all right now i understand why i need an iphone <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess i mean but so to me when i started on twitter it was like hey guys i'm going to karaoke somebody join me it was a yeah. great way to broadcast yeah and people would actually listen and respond right and now to me twitter is a bunch of crickets I can go out and find my favorite comedians sharing jokes. I can yeah. reshare them. Yeah. I say something and nobody hears it. I yeah. think it's because of how much more complicated. I mean, maybe not for us because we're relatively smart guys and yeah. we're tech savvy. But for the average user, you can go on Facebook and you just simply post something and everybody sees it. Everybody that's your friend, everybody yeah. that likes you sees it. You don't have to do ads or DMs or retweets or you know, using all those characters that, you know, for up until probably three years ago, I'd say people were always asking me, like, what's this, what's that? And when they first started coming on to Facebook, when they started doing hashtags and making things searchable via hashtags and stuff like that Nobody on Facebook. Nobody uses that. Right. 
but <laughs> but they just don't. When they first started happening, probably what was it, a year and a half ago, two years ago? Yeah, that's like when that, everybody yeah. really started asking me, like, "What's this mean? What's this mean?" Because they never yeah. even experienced Twitter, like they never yeah. even saw that. So they were like, "Why is this on?" Facebook? So do you think people have defected from Twitter, or do you think people were just never there in the first place? I think I'd probably lean more towards defected. There was definitely a time when everybody was kind of there. Yeah. So, think. like, in Green Bay, we used to have tweet-ups. Right. Where, you know, the, whatever, 20 or 30 people that actually used Twitter mm-hmm. for, in the area, they would all get together. And it was uh, fun. And it was, it was like, uh, it was, it was uh, you know, it felt more cutting edge. It felt like you were part of something that was growing or bigger. And now um, everyone's on Facebook. So you have to be on Facebook. Right. Like you can't, I don't, I don't, I really feel like you're missing out on part of our culture if you're not on Facebook now. And I don't feel so much that you're missing out on our culture if you're not on Twitter. Um, because when there's an event, how does, how do you invite people to events now? You do it through Facebook. Uh, at least I do. I don't know. Yeah. I, I try to, I have like two friends that are holdouts that will not get Facebook accounts. Yeah. So and one is Justin Laser. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'd be three. Like, what the hell, yeah. dude? Like, but it's easier. bizarre. He doesn't have text messages either. Because you get all really? the, you, you get all the accountability <laughs> so on Facebook. Weird. How do you talk too. to him? How do you communicate? I don't. This is why I had him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, like, it's so weird. So, like, our family, like, we'll have like a group chat, and like, we all have iPhones except for my brother Eric, and uh, you know, so everybody's in blue on the iMessage, and you can see when everybody's responding and everything. That's great. Or you use Facebook. It's like those are the two things. And it's like Twitter becomes like this third thing. Mm-hmm. And um, and and you and things get missed. Yeah. You know, how do we schedule all, all the guests on here? We do it through Facebook. Really? When, we I, do. when I tried doing it on Twitter, it got screwed up. There yeah. was some miscommunication that happened, you know. And uh, so and that's fascinating to me how that's uh, sort of become like – it's replaced email for a lot of people. Um, and Twitter, I think, uh, is trying to recapture some of that uh, because that used to be sort of the, the quick messaging, everybody's going out kind of thing. But I think it's too little too late, and I think they have an un, they, they don't have the ability to filter the feed like, like Facebook did. People hate it. They hate the hell out of the fact that Facebook doesn't let them see everything, but you don't want to see everything. Right. I have like a thousand friends. I don't want to see everything they post. And every day I'm training Facebook further saying, please don't show me any more cat pictures. Please no more cat pictures. I don't <laughs> want to see any more cat pictures. And and it learns. And so it it shows me what I want to see. Yeah, and I think that that's part of the, the bare bone profile that Twitter builds. There's just not enough data even if they wanted to go there. Yeah, and so I think they want to. They, I think they want to get there. I think raising the limit helps them with that a little bit. And they 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 raise the limit on pictures. You can have more pictures than one picture. Like they did that sometime last year. Uh, they changed the layout so that it looks more like Facebook. But like as soon as there's just like Facebook one and Facebook two, right? Why do you want that? Like Google Plus, right? Yeah, <laughs> you know. Google did it and they failed. So I mean, and they they just flat out did. So. But interestingly, though, uh, so this just came out today. Uh, Jack Dorsey is uh, probably going to be the permanent CEO for however long that means. And uh, Jack Dorsey is the guy that that runs Square too, I think, right? I believe so. Yeah. So, like the the I think the um, the fear. I'm going to just double check that. I think that's true. Um, I think the fear that they, the reason that yeah, so they didn't they said they didn't want to have him do that, even though they thought he'd be effective. Because they don't want to have them running two companies at once. That's crazy talk. How do you, how do you run two companies effectively? It's hard enough to run one, right? So I don't know. You have any thoughts on that? You know who I'm talking about? He was one of the founders of Twitter. Jack yeah. Dorsey. I don't know. I I think that. You think that can? I think that might changes? be a sign of. Well, it could be a sign of what's to come for Twitter. I mean, it could be the death is imminent kind of. Sorry. Well, so they went a hundred days with no announcement of a permanent CEO. So they've, you know, they've been kind of like rolling around, you know, like in the in the clouds and uh, or in the whatever in the the tweetosphere. <laughs> and tweetosphere. I don't know. Is that and, a word? Uh, I don't know. Um, and uh, so there was a big fear. So like, I think they reacted to some of those news things. The hundred day thing was like a kind of a milestone. So I think that's why they're they're 
rumored to be getting their act together and saying, okay, he's just going to do it. Um, and so it's sort of like the, uh, the Steve Jobs thing. Like, he, you know, you get the, your, the original guy to come back where we had success before. We get him to come back and, you know, now everything will be magical. I don't know. I think it might be too late, but it was too late for Apple and somehow they still figured it out. So, right. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a different level of brilliant brilliance we're looking at. Wow. Well, and they basically said, yeah, the Mac, that's sort of like, we don't, we yeah. don't, we don't care that much. And we're going to, we're going to go all in on these mobile devices. Right. So, I mean, maybe if Twitter can find something, some other way to do it, but I mean, that's, it's hard to see that. It's hard to envision what, you know, what isn't happening. Well, so, and, well Back on the character limit for just a second, the, uh, yeah. there are certain people, especially in the comedy community, where the character limit is the killer feature of Twitter. Yeah. It yeah. forces you to be concise. It forces you to be precise. Absolutely. You know, so being brief and forcing that on somebody is the, the, key, the, the killer function. Now, that being said, take the mathematician route. There are a finite number of things that can be said in a finite number of characters. <laughs> there are only so many letter combinations that fit into 240 Absolutely. characters. Absolutely. So their big thing would be supporting emoji, which I think they've done for a while now. Yeah. But that would have been a killer to do sooner rather I, than raising the character limit. So that's not so much a function of uh, them as it is like the browser. Right. Uh, or, you know, the apps or... You know the fact that they still supported text messages. So right. they, I, you know, I, I, I think they supported emojis from the beginning. Like yeah. Ever since the, well, I, I could use emojis. I could use them on Twitter because Twitter just took bits and yeah. just held bits. So you could send yeah. anything you wanted. If yeah. it was an emoji, a character, whatever, it was up to the encoding on the other side to read it. And you but, know, maybe that's more the point that they're changing that up, where yeah. they're like, you know what, we're not just this block of 140 characters now. Now anything goes, and we're gonna just put it whatever into the feed that we want to. But I still feel like it's going to be a mistake if they if they can't curate that feed somehow. Right. I don't know. Like that's where I struggle with it. Um, and you can always say, well, you can you you choose who you follow, and well, you know, I choose who I follow. But sometimes, you know, they go on some political rant, and what, right. am I going to unfollow them, or am I just going to get angry and like look elsewhere? I, it's just not the same. Um, whereas on Facebook, I can say, don't show me any more of this. But but Facebook's smart enough to know. It's not just Dave that I don't want to hear about. It's maybe it's Samsung. Right. You know? So I don't know. That's it's interesting. So what about this Google stuff? I didn't hear too much about it. I heard that there's a uh, uh, Chromecast audio. Oh, yeah. The new Chromecast. Yeah. So it's upgraded Wi-Fi, right, for the new AC standards. But it also can connect to an, um, an old speaker. Like if you have a speaker from 20 years ago, you just connect the audio plug into it and it makes it wireless. So are those, those are two different devices, though, right? Same device. Works both sure? ways. Yeah. Are you positive? 99%. No, I think you're wrong. I think Chrome, Chromecast Audio is its own thing. I think they're the same. So, but you, either way, they're 35 bucks, right? So they're right. super cheap. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas, like, the Chromecast TV thing, I have an Apple TV and a Roku, so, like, I didn't see any point in getting a Chromecast for the TV. The audio thing is pretty awesome because yeah. uh, anywhere you have speakers, you can throw a Chromecast on there, and I don't know how, how much... Uh, multi-speaker support there is built into that stuff but that's what sonos does and sonos is like thousands of dollars <laughs> well you know i'm gonna go the exact opposite route of what i usually say yeah and in this case remind everyone apple did it first with the first? with the, the airport express but it's granted not, it's not 35 dollars, but it's but not that expensive either right it's like uh 80 or 90 bucks i think it's like that. either 89 or 99 yeah yeah so there's a headphone jack right on it or a line jack. No, I know. Mm -hmm. I, and I, that's what I use. So I, yeah. I mean, so I do have that set up, but, um, it only works in iTunes for like multiple speakers though. That's true. So that true. I don't, but I don't know what the Chromecast does. And, but there, okay. So my philosophical difference with Apple yeah. is why is that lockdown? Why won't they give dev support to send to multiple speakers? That's what I, I don't like about Apple. I don't know. I don't know that. It, I don't know that it's locked down. I think that maybe just nobody's done it. Nobody's doing it. I don't because know. I mean, Spotify has some killer iO uh, iOS and OS X apps yeah. that are phenomenal. But just like you said, they don't do the multiple speaker support They'll over just do one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I'm not sure about that. Um, but I don't. But I also don't know that the Chromecast will either. 
I don't know if it'll do multiple speakers or not. They say not at first. I can read you a quick blip here. I was actually just looking this up. So that's just software. So, you know, Apple could open right. it up. Well, yeah. and really the right way to do it, because Google is trying to push their Google Music, yeah. you know, Google Play Store, I think it's called. Um, if you're streaming from the web, then why can't we send it to multiple endpoints? I can see latency issues if we have a centralized computer in the home trying to send to multiple endpoints that maybe we're going to lose sync. But if it's a cloud service, that should be an easier problem to solve, I would think. I think the home network might be a restriction here, too. Maybe Apple is trying yeah. to take the nice way. Well, cause if, if you so if back, each endpoint has to download, though, I, I almost see it the other way because you're both coming through your main pipe, and then you have to, they're both probably get, grabbing the whole stream yeah. and then figuring out what to do with it. Whereas, uh, you know, the computer can say, you're just going to get the left and you're going to get the right. And, and your, your local Wi-Fi network should be a hell of a lot faster than whatever you're getting over your broadband. Yeah. But the bottleneck so, is the Wi-Fi I network, know. I think. I think Apple foresaw that. Like, for a while, mm -hmm. they want to wait. Because yeah. think about most it's routers. Most people who have routers these days, 100 megabytes would be fast for them. Now, me at home, I can but do But for audio, that should be plenty. Maybe. How many speakers yeah. are you powering? I don't know, I don't know 100. Different. A right, megabit each. Yeah. I mean, That's this audio it's, stream that we're sending today is 64 kilobit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. And it sounds fine. And and it's not music, you know. But, but so, other so you want to double that to music. You know, right? routers can only have so many connections. They can only push so much. Oh. Right. Yeah. So that's what I mean. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. It's the, it is, it's, hard, it's a hard problem to solve either way. I know that. All right. So nobody called. Nobody gave me any other questions. You only gave the number away once. All we right. should probably... 920-438-0394. I should check to see if anybody's actually listening. You can, yeah. <laughs> I tried typing that website and, and it didn't work. Really? Did I give you the wrong thing? Maybe. I don't know. I might have just typed it poorly. No, I think, I think I... Hmm. Yeah, it's not coming up for me. I might have turned that off. I don't know. Okay. Well, whatever. Sorry. We're, we're <laughs> Maybe people are listening. <laughs> As your sponsor, I hope so. Yeah. So should we talk about that? Should we do the sponsor? Sure. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. So uh, so we are here in Camera Corner Studios. This is your first time here, Dave? My first time. You got here. any comments? Actually, it's pretty cool. I was looking around while we were waiting for you to show up. Yeah. And uh, I was talking to... Nick. Nick. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, it's actually pretty neat. I saw more here than I expected to see. They have a, set up, a corner set up for photography if you want to come in and do your own photography. I'm sure there's a rate for that. And, or if you want to come in and do a podcast like we're doing right now, there's a, another corner set up for that. And he was showing me they have the green screen so you can do video and put you know the weather map on the background and you can become the weather guy overnight, all that kinds of stuff. So it seemed like there's a really nice setup going here. Yeah. there's yeah. They can do everything. I, you, you want to throw something in there, Nick? Well, it's just... In, we, we try to be a blank slate for whatever your creative project needs. I mean, whether, whether we're looking at, you know, taking a little home photography session, and you want to step it up with a little bit better lighting or some more professional backdrops, or if you wanted to do a podcast, or even if you're in the business world and you're trying to do like a, a online media blitz of some sort, you know, we can help you with, you know, right now we're doing live audio, we're doing recorded audio. Uh, I have live video capabilities here. I've uh, someone coming in tomorrow to use the green screen for a, a corporate training video. So we have packages available for a one-time use what you need, or you know we can set you up with a, a regular contract if you wanted to make a whole campaign. So just give me a call. Let me know what you want to do. I'm at 920-438-0325 direct, or better yet, why don't you call my department, 920-272-0148. Awesome. Thanks to Camera Corner Studios, which is not in the body shop. No. <laughs> as much as some other professional broadcasters would like to make you think, uh, that building is gone. So Gina feeded us a uh, fed, fed us a, uh, a little, uh, a little uh, thing. Ooh, whoops, I don't know if you can hear that. So uh, I think uh, according to what the, the link she sent me, today is National Podcast Day. What? <laughs> How do we not know this? I did know that. I heard that yesterday, and I so I thought it was yesterday, and then I forgot. No, yesterday was so, National Coffee Day. It yes. was, but well, it can be National Lots of Things Day. There's lots of things, and there's only so many. There's a there's a finite number of days, <laughs> just like there's a finite number of characters in a tweet. Currently, there's a ooh, international, international, international. She corrected me again. 
twice. So hey, that's her role. That's her job. Ah, oh, boy. He's there for. Oh, oh don't don't go there. <laughs> we we got we got into a big argument over a correction this morning that that I felt like didn't need to be there. I've learned <laughs> to love and appreciate the many corrections a day that I receive. See, this is why you're a better man than I am. I, I, I I'm a flawed. I'm a flawed human being, and that is for sure. As long as you can accept it, that's what matters. Uh, no, I, <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard, Dave. We are live. <laughs> Just so you know, we are live. And I don't know if anyone's listening. It's unfiltered and unscripted. Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, International Podcast Day. So that's uh, pretty awesome. I don't have uh, much else to say about that other than the fact that I feel like with, uh, you're familiar with Serial? The serial podcast that NPR did, yeah. Um, I feel like there was like podcasting as like a thing that all the nerds did. It's like it, podcasting was like IRC for a long time, right? It's like a thing that nerds know about. Wow, IRC. That's a throwback. Nerds still use <laughs> IRC. <laughs> you know, that's one I never got into. Sorry. Uh, well, if you're a developer, you like you have to. Like that's just the thing. Like all the Rails guys, all the Drupal guys, uh, I th- I'm sure the WordPress guys, they're on they're on IRC. Like on all the time so i felt like podcasting was a little bit like that like it's yeah. like this thing that like only uber nerds that have a specific reason are into and then the serial thing hit and boom everybody's listening to podcasts um so i think a lot of people think it's a new thing and it's it's totally not new i mean it's not more than course. more way more it's more than a decade that uh you know the fir- that that the first ones i've been listening to have been out and there was like there was recorded audio and even some video prior to that. It just wasn't in a feed that you would get as a podcast in your in your iTunes, right? And even now, like that's so uh, separated out, right? It's kind of a fragmented way to to get like I have to I have to put this up on YouTube and I have to put it up on Stitcher and I have to put it up on iTunes and I have it on the website and I have to announce it on Facebook, and I have to announce it on Twitter, and on Tumblr, and on Pinterest. You know, I have to put this out everywhere um, just to just to get, you know, the exposure that's necessary. You should write an app to do it for you. WordPress has it built in. Oh. <laughs> Which part is built in? <laughs> Republishing to all the other sites. Okay, so... But The, but the YouTube you thing a, we couldn't do. Right, YouTube right, wouldn't right, be right, built right. in. So, uh... All right, so let's talk about that. Excellent question, Nick. <laughs> so, uh, the republishing is great mm-hmm. if that's all you can do. But Facebook knows that. And it, this is primarily a Facebook thing. So, yeah, uh, Twitter and Tumblr, it's, it probably doesn't apply too much. But uh, Facebook in particular, it cares if it's local content. Oh, yeah. So... You have to natively post using a Facebook app if you want it to show up. And you can you can see that. You can see it in your stats. It's like 10 to 1. Uh-huh. Maybe worse. That's true. So, and, and I was noticing that before Facebook made their own scheduled posts. Right. And I was furious. Absolutely. Because, yeah. <laughs> because, so, just speaking uh, on behalf of the social media side of Camera Corner for a minute, yeah. there's, I think we have eight networks that we publish to right now. Sure. I'm not even involved in all of them, but we use a management tool, sure. and you can tell right off the bat, if it was posted directly on Facebook, we'll have 300% more views, more exposure than if we post it through our publishing tool, which is a Facebook-approved partner app. Yeah. So you know what? Uh, uh, interestingly, I just kind of had this thought like, um, you know, we talk about um, Android being a monopoly or iOS being a monopoly, Microsoft being a monopoly, and they get the smackdown. And like, remember back in the day, Microsoft had to include other browsers. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so the, the Europeans especially get on Google and Apple's case about similar things. But yet Facebook gets away with this stuff scot free, and they are dominant and they use their dominant position to make that happen they knew they were dominant they knew they could do that so they did well i think and the most annoying thing for me now is facebook video and that's only gonna get worse 
so the the worst thing, and there there are which other there people... there I, there I have mixed feelings because I feel like YouTube is so dominant right now that anything they can do to kind of limit some of that dominance would be is good for competition. But but they're yeah. using dirty tactics. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, and it's not me that did the research. I think, and and I may have the wrong YouTube creator. I want to say it was John Green or Hank Green wrote a blog post. Uh, so he's a professional YouTuber. He yeah. owns three or four YouTube channels, and that's his full-time job. He also writes some books that have been turned into movies, a recent one, Fault in Our Stars. Um, I, I believe it was John Green that, that did this analysis. But he went out and looked at Facebook and his click-through rates, his share rates, his view rates. Now, keep in mind, there's no revenue sharing on Facebook like there is on other platforms. But they are counting anybody that plays more than a second of your video as a view. Oh, yeah, yeah. And as yeah. you scroll through your news feed, right. it automatically starts playing. So if you scroll slow enough that something is on your screen for more than a second, it counts as someone viewing your video. And they don't go to the level of saying, oh, here's your views in your first 10 seconds. Here's your view in your first two minutes. Here's your view in your whole six-hour video. They just say, 50,000 people viewed this, and that's all you know. Yeah. So they're inflating their statistics, and they're trying to actually use those statistics Absolutely. to go out and buy content creators away from YouTube. Right, right. You know, that said, though, um, YouTube does similar things, though. You know, some of their stats are, are, are inflated, too. There, there are. And there's a certain amount that, you know, as a web developer, you know, yeah. there, are, there are certain things that are just hard to be sure about. Well, yeah. What I don't like is like when actually we, getting accurate numbers of listeners to this. Right. I really don't know. Well, accurately. when there's so many, it's hard to count. <laughs> that's not that's not the problem. It's the partials, right? How do you how do you judge a partial? Because yeah. what if uh, Dave listens to half now and half later? That's right. two. Or like the the um, last episode number ten that you had just published. Yeah, I've now listened to it seven times. Right. Because in testing for today's show, I logged in and oh, it started playing. Right. Right. And then I closed it, and then I hit the refresh button, and oh, I didn't do it right, so there's two listens. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think the way that you were looking where you can actually see data rate transferred is probably your best route yeah. for your specific situation. That's what I have to but go But that's with. not available everywhere. No. You know, like Stitcher is going to give you their count however oh, they choose yeah. to give you their count. Yeah, and that's probably, I don't even know if anybody uses it. Yeah. I feel like the audience we have, we have to tell people about. Yeah, so. because he, here's the thing, too, with the podcast that I've been doing. Yeah. You know, we published an episode two weeks ago, and within a week, my tools tell me we had 12 downloads. Yeah. I look at any other episode, there's like 300 downloads, even though none of them are more than a year old. Yeah. So I don't know how 12 downloads in one week translates to 300 downloads in a year. That doesn't add up to me. Well, it's not linear, right? I mean, right. so there's a lot up front, and then it kind of goes down, but... Um, but it does it does aggregate over time, so it goes up, but it doesn't go up like in a linear fashion. Right. I couldn't. So. I can't see people going back and listening to my garbage from last year. Well, you know what I mean. I don't. I don't think that that's happening. I think you guys do a good job. So one thing that uh, there's this internationalpodcastday.com page that I was looking at. Um, so make sure I put this hashtag podcast day on my stuff because hashtags matter so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. It's fine, but I, I really don't think that most people use them. You know, the I most really important don't. hashtag I have to see is Scanner Squawk. If it doesn't have the Scanner Squawk hashtag, I'm going to miss it. Uh, do you search on Scanner Squawk, or do you just follow I uh, usually what's his just, name that does those? Oh, well, I try to follow Doug, but... Doug, um, right. You know, Sorry, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> The, the I'm bad th with names. It's not always Doug either. He he sometimes passes the reins to someone else, but yeah. it's like. But it's the Press Gazette guys. Yeah, the Press Gazette guys, and and when I see that hashtag, it reminds me. Yeah. Like sometimes I'm not present. I'm I'm you know working or I'm on yeah. site or I'm doing something and I'm not thinking about you know the one thing that every everyone else in Green Bay is thinking about. <sighs> yeah. So then I see that hashtag come across my new news feed. I click it and, man. So you know I will give you that one. I. Totally agree with that one. Uh, I guess I kind of soured on the whole hashtag thing because of TV yeah. and, um, oh. and and the NFL and uh, and Follow Friday. The biggest <laughs> abuser. Every commercial. Yeah. The biggest abuser is is the WWE. 
Really? Every match has a hashtag. So, okay. I, you know, though, that's sort of a niche entertainment thing. It's not like broadcast television. So searching on those hashtags is good for the, for your audience. I mean, yeah. I, I, so, like, that is a use. But, like, if there's a... Uh, I don't know. I don't even know what's a popular TV show that's on TV, but like Breaking Bad, you know, like really putting a hashtag for Breaking Bad, probably not necessary because so many people were, you know, when the finale was on last year, like so many people were watching it anyway. I wouldn't have had time to hashtag search. Everybody was, everybody was watching it. Well, what I like about hashtag is that you don't have to search anymore that they made them all clickable. That's yeah. again the killer feature for yeah. me is that it's a clickable thing. Yeah. So when that's I been see for something, time, intre- yeah, it has been. Yeah. But I think that that's that's almost more important. True. Than than the the tag itself. So do you think Facebook people know like the 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 average? Do you think like fifty percent of Facebook users know that? I would say no. I'm gonna say no. Is that? I well. think they see it in blue and they assume it's clickable, right? But I do- mean, who doesn't know that? See something be surprised. Blue, you click it, right? You would be surprised. <laughs> Am I too young? <laughs> yeah. Have yeah. Seen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, you know what? Oh, you know, that, that brings up another interesting thing. So, uh, a, a tech thing. So, um, my mom was trying to FaceTime uh, my daughter in law and, and Zoe, granddaughter, right? And um, Liz wasn't picking up. And. You know, my mom got offended because my mom actually gets it. She's she understands how FaceTime works, and yeah. she's like, she's in my address book, and I should be in hers, and da da da, right? But I'm like, I don't know that. You know, maybe Liz doesn't know how to put it in her address book, or oh, you yeah. know, you know, like we take for granted that that all young people are masters of all technology. Totally not true. <laughs> they they know what they know, and they totally don't have any clue about the stuff they don't know, like across the board. Uh, as an example, um, Max said, I have to have the podcast up on YouTube or he won't, he doesn't know how to tell it, his friends, how to watch it, how to listen. Right. Uh, because they all know how to use YouTube, but they don't know how to do anything else. And, and, you know, he's 11. So technically his friends like in school, they have an excuse. Well, they, well, yeah, they're, they're extra young. Right. But I'm, but, but also they're, they're under the, the third, the magical 13 year old age for Facebook. So they can't be on Facebook. Makes sense. Um, where you know maybe I would re- you know I would direct regular people. You just got to so. start volunteering to go to all of the schools in town and to teach them what RSS is. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. Because that'll work. Uh, you know, it's hard to even explain to to, to the to, you know the people that would that would come to our web meetups. Yeah, I would say half of them didn't know what RSS was. Yeah. Well, and I don't use RSS for anything but podcasts these days anymore. I mean, nobody does. Because Google killed it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. when Google Reader that went huge. out. That was huge. It, it, it was, but it wasn't. Because it's like, I still I get more news than I ever have. So. You know, and that's probably really the, the right transition for a Twitter-type service, really, is to replace that RSS. I don't know. That's, you might be onto something there. Well, that's what I kind of use uh, Twitter for. Oh, another message. Let's see if this is something. Oh, from Anonymous. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. How do you send anonymous messages on Facebook? Shut up. <laughs> someone wrote them it's, in. It's someone who doesn't want me to say who it is. So don't don't be like that, Dave. You're not going to be invited back. He really wasn't invited at all. <laughs> That's true. Worst things happen. <laughs> I don't remember there being a guest on this invite. Right. All right. So, uh, so the the clock is accurate. Yes. Yes. That, okay. So. Uh, um, even though technically they're not uh, a sponsor for this because it's li- like the last day of September and uh, the sponsor was for October, uh, I do want to give out uh, another shout out to Release Wire. Uh, and you can go to releasewire.com and uh, read up on all of their, their stuff. And they're they are, uh, my sponsor that won the eBay auction. Uh, so they sponsored all four episodes um, for October. And it, I think it was Dan's birthday yesterday. Uh-oh. You're I'm just reading the question. Oh, okay, okay. Um. <laughs> I didn't see that, the last part. <laughs> that, that was hilarious. So uh, thanks to Camera Corner Studios. Thanks to Release Wire. Uh, and 
So I'll read this one last anonymous question, then we can maybe play a music track and give any last thoughts. And, I can probably and, come up with some music. Done. I got some in the, the Dropbox. I just have to start you, my computer again. Or you have my, some other ones? My battery was getting low, yeah. and I wanted to make sure it didn't die. So your choice. So you, you, can, you can even intro it, whatever you want to do. Awesome. Uh, so this was a question that uh, was interesting. Uh, I don't know if Nick knows this. Um, so when and for what were you, me, me, interviewed by U.S. News and World Report magazine? Uh and I don't remember exactly when, like the date, um, but uh, it was in regards to the AOL Tom Warner merger. And um, I am good at what I do. I'm good at being found online. And I'm good at, uh, I was good at being found by US News and World Report. And uh, they found out that, you know, uh, I was running this, uh, you know, small time internet provider, but, you know, they did, they came across me. Um, so, yep, sort of small time. Uh, you know, we never had more than 10,000 customers. Uh, you know, AOL had at their peak, I don't know, 100 million or something obscene. Um, so when that happened, being in the business we were in, um, it was sort of a weird and scary time even. Um, and I think it's kind of proven to be true, even though they kind of mishandled that from a financial aspect. You know, if they would have been able to do what they should have been able to do, which is migrate all of their old AOL dial-up users onto Time Warner Cable like, and just snap their fingers, they could have owned the industry. Um, and that was everyone's fear, and they totally fumbled that, they just ridiculously fumbled that. Um, and I think my quote in the article was something to the effect of, all they have to do is snap their fingers and flip a switch, and we're all out of business because they have access to, you know, to cable technology and the rest of us, we didn't, we didn't have any access to that. They had a monopoly on that. Um, and so then there were some, uh, FCC rules on that where they had to sort of open it to competition. It ended up putting all the competitors out of business. Um, like earthlink, they're basically, you know, not, nobody has earthlink internet anymore. As far as I've heard. Um, I know they have an office in town, but I think that's because they're involved in phone service and all sorts of other auxiliary things. Um, and, uh, so the question says who was on the cover and I, I don't remember. I think it was, I think it was George W. Bush. I don't remember. So it was, it was a while back. Can I interject question 2.A uh -oh. before we get to question C or whatever? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Was this before or after you were featured on the cover of Bloomberg Business Week? That was way before. Okay. So yeah, so I was in U.S. News and World Report. Right in the, the the main article, uh, and actually, like my name opens it up. You can Google it; it's out there somewhere. Uh, which is like uh, pretty awesome. And I I said at the time, I'm like, oh, well, you know, uh, I can die now because what else am I going to accomplish? <laughs> uh, even though it was sort of a sort of a negative thing, um, it was it was still pretty cool. You were being interviewed over how your business was going to die. Yes, that is kind of a negative yeah, thing. Yeah, <laughs> well. Uh, yes. Uh, which, you know, and so it was, it was weird because, you know, you'd think that, uh, you know, I think this is a quote that's attributed to, to Bill Gates, like how, how, uh, people underestimate how much things change in 10 years and overestimate shorter time periods. Um, but, uh, yeah. And as is pointed out on the, on the, on the, on the, I think on the, the beginning of the article, there's a little caricature and I think I was supposed to be the little dog that was uh. yipping at the. The, the two the AOL Time Warner guys, um, yeah. So it was kind of crazy. So anyway, that was far before my actual front cover, which uh, was a lot more uh, fun because that was that was all positive because it was a positive thing for for Green Bay. That was when the Packers were on the uh, front cover of Business Week um, with Mark Murphy. I got to hold his butt up. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a, it, uh, he has a very, uh, athletic build <laughs> and, uh, whatever. He's not, he's not a small guy. He played football. So I wasn't, I wasn't the only one that was holding him up, but we had all, we had, he was in the stands, like he was, uh, jumping in the stands and I had my crazy makeup on and it was, uh, that was a blast and full circle. That was the day that, uh, I forget which new iPhone came out that day. It was like, I think it was the five. So that was the, the the same day that the five came out. That came out. So like I had to 
you know, get in line and then get out of line. I think Gina ran back to the store to go to go get it for me. It was a big it was a big mess, but I had you know got a new iPhone and uh, got on the front cover. It was killer. It was That's super fun. Cool. Yeah, it was super cool. That was uh, yeah, that was the one that Trisha brought by. Yeah, I know we don't do video yet, if ever, because <laughs> I have a face for radio. So, did I miss any questions? I feel like I want to make sure to to actually answer all the questions that anybody actually did send. I don't think you missed anything. However, yeah. I'm not following your Twitter account. That would uh, be the only one that I cannot be checking for you. You know, if anybody like direct tweets me, it's supposed to ding, but I had my dinger off like a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me just check that real quick. I don't know. You got any other uh, techie things, Dave? Uh, not offhand. So, oh, so since uh, yesterday was International Podcast Day, you got a, any favorite podcasts? Especially, like, ones that are a little more obscure, you know? like This is going to sound really odd right here in this environment, but yeah. I'm not, like, a huge podcast person. Yeah. I usually read faster than most people talk, especially in the public format. So I like to read a lot. But if there was a podcast to follow, probably Verge or Mashable and Gadget, those three, they're not really all that oblivious but verge i think covers everything from tech to beyond tech to goofy to kind of weird and everything in between so uh all right i actually want to follow up on that real quick um so <clears throat> this last week adpocalypse came have you heard that term Ed yes i yeah so only once yeah probably for me <laughs> yeah you didn't explain it so, so I'm, I'm anxious okay now so Here. adpocalypse is uh it's huge. It's actually a really big deal. So uh, last week, week before, whenever iOS 9 came out, must have been a uh, week before last, um, Apple turned on the ability to have ad blocking built in in a native form that's really super fast on iOS and on the Mac today. Uh, so it's not like an add-on that does a bunch of programming that can be just as slow as getting the actual ads themselves. It's actually built in compiled filtering rules that are in the browser, so they're super fast. How? So, <clears throat> so you get an app, and there's rules to making the app, and then they take it and they do their magic and they compile it into the browser, right? So, a um, bunch of tests have been done by other people, but also by me. Um, and I have a favorite. So, if somebody's on iOS, and I don't know if this one's going to be ported to the Mac or not, but the one to get is called One Blocker, and you can get it free. But then there's an in-app purchase, which uh, which I got because I'm addicted to the iTunes store. And you can block. So by default, it'll block w one thing, and they're in groups. So like there's an ad block group, and there's 2,923 rules that they implement. And with a little switch, you can turn that on. Okay? Amazing. So are, are and they... And that's free. Boom. Wouldn't you want it on all the time, though? Oh yeah, but so so the thing is, well, you might not because one of one of the things you can block is web fonts, and so I make mm -hmm. extensive use right. of, a, of a thing called Font Awesome, which is like little uh, graphics, mm -hmm. and I'm scared that people are going to use this, and that's what I was working on this Absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Okay, so I'm afraid people are going to just turn everything on or off, whatever way you want to look at it, right? Turn all the blocking on, and then. My websites look like crap because they're going to have little, uh, like the, the old Twitter where there'd be an emoji and it'd be a little block of characters, right? Um, and I don't have a good way to fix that yet. Uh, so, so I'm working on that. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'm backwards from the rest of the world, but am I the only person that thinks advertisements are a great thing that we should be thankful for? So, like, so I don't want to pay for every YouTube video I watch. I don't want to pay for every song I listen to on Pandora. I don't want to pay for every website I visit. Yeah. So, uh, oh, there's so much, and so all the all the other big podcasts have spent like entire episodes talking about this, and so we're kind of over time. But yeah, uh, there's a huge debate. So the number one podcast, uh, are not podcast guys. Well, one of the, the there's a guy that does uh, a podcast app for iOS called Overcast. He's also the, he also used to be the, the head developer at Tumblr, ah, and so he's a well known guy, mm -hmm. a guy named Marco Arment, okay, and he said I want to use an ad blocker because ads are annoying, especially on my phone where I'm paying for my data, and yeah, I guess. so so he made one, but then he noticed that uh, the ads on his site were blocked, and that wasn't really the reason, but. He got some questions about like, well, what things get blocked and which things don't. Yeah, and he didn't want that to be his responsibility, 
uh, and he didn't want people getting pissed off at him for three bucks because you know he's selling it for you know two to you know two three four five dollars at the most maybe you can sell one of these apps for and he's like i'm gonna have to deal with this flood of people complaining both ways it's sort of like spam control right right you get people complaining both ways like i didn't see the thing i wanted to see i saw things i didn't want to see right so there's it's a no-win situation and it's thankless nobody <laughs> nobody says I love my spam filtering. <laughs> right. And nobody says that they right. love their ad blocker until it stops working. You know, they, then they notice it, right? So that's a, it's, a, it's a huge philosophical thing. But anyway, he was number one, the number one app on the App Store. He pulled it the next day. He said, I'm out. And uh, so that actually, it actually brought like more awareness to the whole ad block thing. Uh, so it, in a way, it sort of probably had uh, maybe an unintended consequence that he didn't really foresee. But, but anyway, these are hugely popular. They're number one in some of the categories anyway. Games are usually number one overall. But yeah. this was the number one app. It was called Peace. And it was good. But uh, this other one is better. So he probably would have lost eventually anyway. Uh, one Blocker, it's called. And it's pretty amazing. And Because kind of like in the, you know, you're in the Apple world. So you probably don't even know about Amazon Underground. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so Amazon Underground is an app store on Google systems Yeah. where they have what they call actually free apps. Okay. Where Amazon has been given permission to put a single oh, yeah. launch ad in, and then there's no ads, there's no charges, and like all the unlockables in the games and whatever, you know, you want to buy extra birds and Angry Birds, whatever, that's all free. Okay. And it's ad supplemented by Amazon. So... They're taking a different approach. They're reducing the ads by giving you the paid version of the app in exchange for one splash on load. Right. But now, so this this native ad block built into yep. Apple, is this happening at the OS level? Yeah. So now, so like if you have Facebook and you click on something and it opens a browser window, it's blocked there. It's blocked in all of the, wow. all of the browser views. Uh, I mean, maybe the app can like specifically turn some of that stuff off, but... It's huge. It's huge. It's and just it, going to disrupt revenue models left and right. Good. Uh, so, so this has been a huge debate, right? Because uh, how much stuff can be supported for free? Um, you know, if you think about it, um, I mean, it's there's it's it's easy math, right? So we had all these newspapers, and they were able to charge so much X for advertising, mm -hmm. TV, radio, all this money for advertising. And as soon as this stuff goes online, we know we're making a podcast that thousands of people listen to, <laughs> and it's hard to make money doing it. Right, yeah. Whereas radio, they might be broadcasting to nobody, and they're able to charge whatever, right? So, like, now that advertising is trackable and advertisers are keen to it, uh, they keep putting more and more and more and more demands on tracking and all these things that make people just uncomfortable, they don't want, and they're intrusive. So... Especially on mobile, oh my gosh, you know, you pull something up, you, I, we've all had it, you pull something up and there's like a thing where the X isn't there to close the thing and it, sometimes you can't close it and it's, it's a big mess, it's a huge mess. And so now we're putting a little more of the control back in the users. Some sites are going to go away, some sites are going to put up a message saying, hey, I, we can tell you're using an ad blocker. Uh, please turn it off. That's how we get paid. That's already pretty common. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I use an ad block. I use, I had, I think it's just called ad block. You can probably Google it. It's free and they accept donations, but, and it allows you to set. So it, by default, it's going to block everything. But like if you go to Hulu, like Hulu won't play videos, even yeah. if you do pay for the, uh, for the service. Yep. The videos won't play with an ad blocker on. Right. So you can go to the ad blocking, just click on it and, right. you know, say allow all, everything is domain. But I do see that on a lot of sites. So those, the ones in the browsers, they, their revenue model, for the most part, is to charge advertisers to bypass the ad block. Yeah. <laughs> so there's all this stuff, and it's like the way Apple's doing it is awesome. It's really awesome. And um, it's going to be – so here's the other scary thing, though. People it, – it, it, they over they overplayed their hand. The advertisers overplayed their hand. Instead of having like a you know a, you know a little banner ad or having you know something that pops up every once in a great while to remind you that you're using this service a lot, you know they overplayed their hand, and so now we're going to lose out on a lot of things. And Google Analytics is going to end up going away because that's a tracker, and the number two thing on here is block trackers, and Google Analytics is one of those trackers. 
Yeah. Uh, include and there's three thousand nine hundred eighty six other trackers that it locks. I don't see how any of this is a good thing. So, well, uh, it's good for people who actually know their stuff, uh, because I'm gonna uh, I, I'm so I've I've used these blockers on my site. The only thing that gets disrupted is right now is the web fonts. Well, so so here's a alternative scenario. Yeah. I have been searching because it's my end of fiscal year. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of data analysis and whatnot and i'm looking up different tools and different database stores to try and you know do some analytics and my of course my search profile my trackers they all know that i'm looking for excel (laughs) snap-ins they all know i'm looking (laughs) so all my ads are changing and you know this is something that people go like "Ooh, they're spying on me i don't care right i don't care but they don't work Here's the problem. They do work. <laughs> no, they don't. And today, I found a new tool, which is awesome, that I'm ready to spend 750 bucks on, yeah. that if a tracker wasn't on me, I would have never found this tool. I am forever thankful for this ad, because it led me to the right product to solve my problem. So, I, I, I feel like, um, so the way that, that we do ads here, and the way other podcasts do ads, is well, it's in the content. This is a Facebook ad. This is just sitting in the margins, yeah. popping up while I'm typing. Yeah. You know? Well, so Facebook, because it's so big again, they can enforce some of this. Well, so, okay, so there's a few pieces to this, right? Um, nobody uses the Facebook website on their mobile. True. They use the True. app. Yeah. So then you see the ads. And so, so here's the other, the other uh, uh, sort of um, con- my- controversial aspect of it. Apple has an ad platform that they allow you to put ads into your apps. Right. And those won't be blocked. Right. Of course. <laughs> but, you know, again, still, even even if, you know, in your case, yeah, the Facebook ad will still be shown because right. it's in the Facebook app. Yeah. My profile won't be updated because all of my Google searches haven't been tracked. My trackers are gone. Analytics is gone. Right. You know, as an advertiser's perspective, I want to know the demo of the people that are on your website. You know, those are all important things for me. I think we're done. Oh. Up to you. Okay. That's just Dan. Oh, well, it's Dan. Not, Uh-oh. Funny curiosity on the yeah. ad blocker thing with the, yeah. the new iOS built-in thing. Does that block YouTube ad? Like, So if you're on YouTube watching a video, those are interjected long before it even gets to the browser, right? That becomes part of the stream, and you can't block that out, right? So so that ad's still there. No, those, those can be blocked, too, because they're separate They're separate video files that get loaded in. But they but they could. They could concatenate it on right onto the the actual video file and then there's no it's much more difficult to get around it then you'd have to have tools like some kind of 30 second skip button or something and then they have to enforce that and it just becomes this like cat and mouse thing uh just like the new tivo that just got announced today has a magic skip all commercials button it's not a 30 second skip it's a skip them all and they go through and I, they might have somebody do this by hand i don't know how they do it but they have like the the top 20 networks they probably have some somebody sitting there watching every episode and clicking where the ads are. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easier to track volume levels? No, be, because uh, that it's not consistent. Some some ads are louder. Like usually, that's the thing that you notice, right? But it drops off and then it's loud. But that happens in TV shows though too sometimes. So then you get false positives. Yeah. And any of the anything anything like that. I think life is a false positive sometimes. Yeah, the whole advertising thing is super fascinating. That's a uh, and and there are no good answers to it. Um, it's it's ultimately it's good for uh, for all of us. I think it's I think it's good for Camera Corner. I think it's good for us, like me as a podcaster, me as a website builder. I feel like these people that get free money and live off of fictional advertising that doesn't really exist. I feel like uh, it's actually a good thing if those things go away. And more, I, the quality things are going to stick around. Quality doesn't go away. The New York Times isn't going to go away because there's some ad blocking now. You know, the Wall Street Journal is not going to go away. Uh, what was the one you mentioned? The Verge. They're not going to go away. They're going to find ways to 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 make their stuff work. And they may have to have some, I don't know, some paid sponsorships of categories of articles. And they may not be able to block. You know, those things might be unblockable then. You well, know what the real play is here, right? If you pay Apple enough money, <laughs> they'll let your ads through. Well, that's sort of it. Like they, so now that since they're the dominant app platform, they're like, screw the web. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and my biggest fear is, you know, you you mentioned the Wall Street Journal and other you know news sites. Yeah. If they can't 
replace traditional advertisements on their site, they're going to have to find other ways to get revenue. Yep. And will they compromise their journalistic integrity due to a sponsorship arrangement? Because right now, the fact that we're using Google AdSense to support our local newspaper, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what the articles are. It doesn't matter who's reading them. It doesn't matter because we aren't responsible for what ad is served up with your news. Right. Right. And now that, you know, if we can't, if we have to show an ad and we have to sell it directly, now we need to place that ad. And it's now our responsibility. You know, I mean, I get some of that, um, but boy, you know, align yourself with brands that you do believe in. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, you sponsor me, Camera Corner Studio right. sponsors me. I love your stuff. And I'm not ashamed to say that. If you, if you tell me today, hey, this is the end, we're done sponsoring you, I'm not going to stop saying that either. Well, so like, that's great so, for me to hear. You know, Thank you. Know, you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. but like, so, yeah, so yeah. like our, there's an alignment of, of, how, of, of your viewpoint. Well, but here's the thing. So um, Company X yeah. is in the news for laying off a bunch of employees, and Company X is going to be the sponsor of that news story. <laughs> right. That so that so that might be a problem. Except there's not just one news source. Well, no, I get that, but still, as as an advertising salesperson for that company, yeah, right. And I, I go out and I get twenty yeah. companies. Am I now going to change the news content that I'm providing so because that, of the sponsorship so, alignment? But so that's already happened, right? So you you remember yeah. a few years back uh, when I, I don't think it was a TiVo thing, but it was like a TiVo competitor, and um, CNET did an article, a best of CES, and this device won. I forgot what it is even called. And they were, they're owned by CBS. And CBS said, that lets you skip commercials. That doesn't get to win. And they had to, and they pulled it. Yeah. And I mean, that was a huge controversy as a result. So, I mean, that already happens, and those places already just go way overboard with ads. I just feel like um, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad, right. it's happening. Well, so, like, we the day <laughs> the day that the NFL pulls their broadcasts because they can't run ads is the day that everybody's going to take my side. They're not going to pull their broadcasts. They're going to move them to an app. They're already doing that. I guess. You know, Major League Baseball has all but done that already. I just I still think like if if it gets to that point where I can't watch the Packers for free somehow. Yeah. There's going to be so, thousands of people lighting fires. So that's sort of a a, a misrepresentation anyway. Because yeah. you can sort of watch it for free, but you can't watch it on demand for free. True. And you, most people don't, most people still have cable. Like over half of all people have cable or dish or something. So they're paying anyway. So big deal. You know, like, I don't think it's that big of a deal if I have to buy the NFL app. I don't know, because uh, you also got to look at the rural areas, you know. I mean, where my parents live, there is no cable provider. But they can get this or DirecTV, and they probably have that. Don't they, they don't. They have no They, have they no only have terrestrial television. But that's, the option they is that. there. They choose it. Yeah. Right. But and I choose that, thing. too. I don't have cable. Am I going to spend 150 that. bucks for a dish, or am I going to watch the Packers for free and suffer through the ads? Yeah. Okay. So the the last part about that is, in particular about the Packers... Every single bar has it on in town. <laughs> so well, parents don't it, drink. So it, it doesn't matter. You can you can you can go to Applebee's, whatever. Right? Better so does cheaper. You know. Yeah, yeah. Which is ridiculous, but true. Yeah. Uh, so like I've had that conversation. I'm like, I, hell, if I'm going to pay for cable for the, you know, very 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 few times I want to see a, a, a football game that's not broadcast yeah. on broadcast TV, I can I can go three blocks down to the bar and watch it there. So. I don't know. And that's way cheaper. Like, cable is expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I feel like all this stuff is, it's all a wash. It's all going to be good. Does Dan have anything he wants to add, or are we wrapping up? Uh, we can wrap up. Yeah. You gotta... I keep drawing you later and later because no. I really don't like no. this ad block thing. You know what? Well, let's pick that up next time. Like, okay. uh, on, an, on an, whatever, right. on another one. I'm going to probably steal that over to my show, too. That's good. Because so, that's the topic oh, that I so, want to kill. So, the thing I did want to talk about before I got all off track there was, uh, it's International Podcast Day today on September yes. 30th, and uh, I should mention your podcast as one of my favorite podcasts, the Technopoly uh, 411. Yes. 
So is it technopoly411.com? Technopoly411.com is the okay. place yeah. you can listen to it. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's my show, but it's my, my character's show. Yeah. So it's partially me, partially it's, not. Uh, and, and Dan is on it? Yes. And uh, Again, Dan's character is on it. Partially him, partially and, not. And, We're all exploded versions of ourselves, and, and, as I said in our last episode. In spite of that, it's still awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. He's not that. listening, is he? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but my headphones are really loud, he's so pre- he might hear He's you. pretending not to, so, yeah. it's, so I, I got no benefit out of that. Uh, uh, bummer. Bummer. So let's wrap up. You got a track? You want to you wanna uh, intro yeah, it? Yeah, I have a track. I can't remember which one, one I clicked, though. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez? We did that one already. Saturday morning something? Uh, did we not do both of those? I don't know. I'll hit a different one. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have had that lined up. Because uh, some of these are covers. Boss Live... Wind a song? Is that one safe? Well, let's do that one. Let's play that. Yeah. See how it plays. Whatever. It's good. We're live. My computer's not making noises. Uh oh. So you're gonna play Band of Seahorses Wind Song. And that was one that I uh recorded live at the farmers market when they played for the Battle of the Bands. When I was not banned. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> You're the only one. You're the only one. Oh, I was watching um, while he's trying to find the music real quick. Yeah. So I was reading part of the Google. Um, well, like on the Verge, they do the. We, we, like, it's like a live news feed, right? Just keep yeah. scrolling. Of the Google event? Right. So yeah. before the event, they were talking about all these songs that were on. And um, he, had, he had done a, a tweet about you know all these were dad songs and then yeah the guy was doing the the, the tweet his last name is bon b-o-h-n but yeah. you could pronounce it bone <laughs> and so sear part of it whatever his name is the head guy at google he he replied he said these are dad songs only if you throw me a bone oh. he spelled it b-h-o-n sorry just not that funny i know but you had a pun so i got reminded of a pun yeah mine was sort of unintentional <laughs> It was intentional. <laughs> he got punned. He was doing a great job of stalling for the guy that couldn't find the right fader. <laughs> yeah? Oh, do you have it playing now? Yeah, well, I, I kind of heard it. I didn't know if you had it like, playing, playing. Nice. Are we off? Oh, oops. Well, good, because I wanted to thank Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, bud. Fun. Fun.